Hello and welcome to Doc to Me. My name is Heather. And I'm Kathleen. And just to remind everybody, all of our social media information is in the show notes on your listening app. Feel free to reach out to us. Yes, we love recommendations. I don't want to see I'm desperate for conversation, but I'm stuck at home with the toddler all day. So I'm... Desperate for conversation. Yeah, he sucks at communication. <laughs> He's getting, getting to the point where he can do sentences. <laughs> He's, He's working on it, Heather. God. He is. Anyway, this week we are covering Winnebago Man. I was able to watch this for free on Tubi with ads. Ads were pretty sparse. Yeah, I I didn't mind them. Like towards the end, it almost I forgot that I was watching yeah. with it ads because it was so <laughs> long between them, and they were really quick. I gotta be honest, this was not as enjoyable this time around. It was my first time watching, and yeah, I feel like it could have been shorter. It was just it sits at a ninety percent. Which, I mean, it's not, like, a terrible documentary. But a 90%? Yeah. That's that's a bit strong. Yeah. So, I guess 10 years between views really changes it. I just, I don't remember there being so much yada yada with stuff. Yeah, it was, like, a lot of, like, filler. These guys. No explanation how. Just. Let's bring them on camera. Yeah, it's, yeah. So, did you ever see the original bootleg tapes i did not i was not a cool kid my husband said he remembered seeing them but i never saw them till the internet i grew up with the tapes of the farting preacher i remember (laughs) those fondly did you ever see my grandpa for some reason i don't ever remember seeing anything funny other than like my own pathetic recitals (laughs) and shit on a vhs yeah, but it's so weird because, like, when I think videos. about it, like, I remember watching, like, Sleeping Beauty on Betamax, like, <laughs> so I should have been at that age, but I guess I was just really, like, shrouded. Well, was, things were different before the internet. You had to know somebody. Yeah, it was like I was not cool enough and I was, like, kind of protected. I don't know. <laughs> I lived under a rock back then. So, um... By the way, Farting Preacher still holds up. We showed him to our oldest, and he was quoting him for weeks. To be fair, farts are always funny. <laughs> always. So, When a Bagel Man was directed and produced by Ben Steinbauer, premiered at South by Southwest Film Festival in Austin on March 14th, 2009. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not sure if this company is Kino or Kino International, acquired American Theatrical and home video rights in March 2010 and released the film nationally in U.S. theaters on July 9th and on DVD November 2nd, 2010. Kino Smith acquired Canadian and American theatrical television and home video rights in May to film nationally in Canadian theaters on September 10th and on DVD November 9th, 2010. Wow, it really blew up. And there's a 60-minute version of Winnebago Man, which aired in the UK on BBC4 on August 30th, 2010. Wow! part of the Storyville series of documentaries. Like, yeah, just make us look worse. That's, that's surprising. On August 12th, 2011, Winnebago Man premiered on the internet for free viewing in the United States for two weeks on Hulu and Snag Films. Hulu. <laughs> So I guess we should start off by saying if you haven't seen the original Winnebago Man clips. Stop what you're doing yeah, and watch it now. That made its way to the internet. They're on YouTube. There are plenty on there. And they're well worth it. I'll try to remember to put a link to one of them in the show notes. Um, they show some of it in this film, but damn, it's worth watching the whole thing. Like that one girl said, whenever I'm having a bad day, I just watch that and it makes me feel better. <laughs> So the first thing that they start off with is this old guy saying, I'm 78 fucking years old. Why should I put up with that shit? With this shit? It's my favorite. Which, that's true. I mean, for fuck's sake, get it together. <laughs> that's a great opening line to any any movie. Just <laughs> I'm 34 years old. Why should I have to put up with this shit? Yeah, I've been saying it all week. 
it's like when nobody's around either (laughs) just doing dishes saying it so so ben stumbles upon this vhf vhs tape titled winnebago four city iowa 1989 and he is hooked and wants to find out just who the dude is but all he can find online is a letter the guy wrote looking for a boat do they ever explain where they get the name jack remney from no they do not this is one of those things they just yada yada yeah where did you get this name like was it like credits on a commercial like they Does don't have to say it at one point i've never seen that in any of the clips yeah just kind of like some some weird detective shit yeah, I, I don't remember his name being said but we definitely know tony i appreciate that tony don't slam the fucking door <laughs> <laughs> but also like who hasn't said that to their kid like 50 <laughs> times a day so yeah um I had to stop this film when they show my favorite clip on the internet, which is that woman falling when she's crushing the grapes. That <laughs> one gets me every fuck. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> like, she makes a noise like a wild cat, like hacking up a hairball. Like, that is my favorite failed video. <sighs> and it really, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> it really, it's a classic. It's just the noise she makes. We're going to take a brief intermission <laughs> so, that, so that Heather can go pee before she pees herself. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, that fucking noise. So the thing I hate about this film is it really wants you to feel bad for laughing at videos, which it's like a weird guilt trip of how dare you laugh of clips on YouTube, but this shit has been happening for how long? Like It's... I feel like it's like a common core of every human being that I like mean, even funny as home videos. How old is that show? Even yeah, even going back to like the fucking stone ages, I am pretty sure that it was funny when shit happened to other people. It just felt weird to blame this on the internet. Like you fucking monster laughing at somebody's humiliation. No, I've been I've been laughing at people tripping since like birth. Yeah. The weird little moment that they had is I just yeah divided. like shame on you yeah uh anyway ben can't find anything online about jack other than the boat thing he was looking for a boat yeah um, they never explained what he wanted to do with this boat either did yeah. he get his boat clearly he didn't get his boat he calls the winnebago company who is aware of the video but wants nothing to do with it which, which like this has been free advertisement for them yeah all these years like I don't know that most people would know what a fucking Winnebago was without yeah. this commercial. Um, so yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's free advertisement. They want nothing to do with it. They haven't had any contact with Jack since 1989 when he worked on the videos. So somehow the director gets into contact with the guys who worked on the original film. Again, not much explanation. Yeah, they must have had like a serious l- I, I log. Think they talked to those for like the film crew those guys who have like all those tapes people would send in and like there was like something on it but even then how do you get into contact with somebody from that long ago i don't know it was because this would have been like before like facebook was really accessible to everybody yeah i don't know i mean i can't imagine i mean they must have in some sense been like really really like diligent with their record keeping like for their employments or whatever during that time they're like oh yeah this is the whole like 30 people that worked on cast you know and production and all this shit for the commercial it's just for as long as this movie is there's a lot they just kind of skip over they had to use some other filler (laughs) So we do learn that Tony, the guy who's off camera constantly getting yelled at, had just graduated high school, which makes so much more sense. <laughs> we'll slam the damn door. <laughs> I think we all remember how stupid and untrustworthy we were with any simple task at that age. Oh, God, yeah. I couldn't imagine working on camera. So the crew all say that Jack really was like that. He wrote his own script and seemed to really get ahead about his performance. Like, the guys were judging him. Like, they don't give a shit. They're just there to collect This isn't the fucking, like, 
opera and they Broadway. Said he seemed nicer on camera. Like, like he really wasn't mean to anybody. <laughs> just very crappy. Grumpy. Yeah, I I didn't take it. I didn't seem like you should be like frightened He's not of throwing him. Throwing stuff at anybody. He's yeah, just I didn't feel like at himself, I didn't feel really. like he was a threat in any way. It was more funny than like creepy or scary I wish they could have interviewed the old couple actors who were in it yeah that was their take he's um, fucking crazy <laughs> so yeah the guys just decided to make copies of the tapes and hand them out to friends and within a month the winnebago executives were pulling people in for questioning and jack was fired i like the one guy who was like i felt bad I was like, really because you got him fired you got somebody fired you feel bad? Yeah, you should, dude. Like, they don't really talk about it, but they were originally shooting over two weeks for two 10-minute sales videos. That's insane. Why would that take two like, weeks? Like, you <laughs> should be able to wrap that up in, like, a day. Yeah, why does it take two weeks? So, Ben, the director, hires a private investigator to find Jack, and the only thing the guy can find is nothing but information for P.O. boxes. And he's, like, somehow, like, creeped out that he had so many P.O. boxes, and that's the only address he's ever had. It's like, that's not that, like, mind-blowing. No. He doesn't have any property or voter registration to show where he would currently be living until two weeks later when Ben receives a voicemail from Jack. It's so crazy hearing that beep from the answering machine. Like ugh. that, that and hearing the internet dial up honestly, takes me back every time. Honestly, though, like watching him, like doing all these interviews and talking about the process and the whole thing, it reminds me so much of like my ex, like back in that year, like when we were together and shit. Like it's like nostalgic the yeah. way he dresses and stuff, and you're just like, oh my god like history (laughs) his message is basically not sure why you would have any interest in me but if you want to talk cool ben basically sent a letter to every po box on the list and somehow one ended up in jack's hands i would have been like "Ah, he's like a stalker i feel like i should call the police (laughs) who are these other people just receiving it yeah like what what is this Winnebago man. <laughs> we check like, that out. Yeah, like Google. <laughs> suddenly he's got a million more like viewers. <laughs> so it turns out Jack is a caretaker at some fishing resort in Northern California, which seems perfect for him. I would love that. God, so remote. He's a hermit. Except no Amazon deliveries. That's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Damn it. I need my two day service. Although it's not been so Target's great lately. Target's been pretty good with two-day service. There's so. no Target near there either, Heather. You gotta drive goddamn two hours to get to a damn Target. God, that's what we have to do, basically. There's no Target around here. It pisses me off. Let's put up another Walmart. Why? I mean, honestly, the best thing I did for my finances was moving further from Target. Oh, God, I love Target. I can really go for that dollar spot right about now. <laughs> He's a hermit who enjoys the peace and quiet, who only needs his books and computer, and apparently has access to an EA Sports sweatshirt, which I love. <laughs> I saw that too. Which EA I, Sports. Game. game. I saw that and I thought it was weird considering Where how he said that like technology old. was like the devil or whatever. So he's like so put off with technology, but he's wearing an EA like sports video game sweatshirt. Yeah. Where did he get that? This old dude. Like, he must have, like, just found it at Goodwill or something. And he was just like, this this is a nice sweatshirt. That was all I could focus on. Seriously, the contradiction. <laughs> he lives in his 76-year-old cabin. And don't worry about his safety because he definitely mentions he's got shotguns. But says nothing about the two coffee makers he has there. <laughs> he used to double fist it, Heather. Why does this old dude need so much coffee on hand at one time? <laughs> Like, I go through an he's, entire pot of coffee to myself every day. He's not think, getting much company. Why do you need two at one time? <laughs> so, Jack had no idea about these clips being famous until a friend asked if he had ever searched for himself on the internet. That reminds me of, like, Rick Astley. 
<laughs> he had no idea about Rick Rolling until his kids told him. Nuh uh. Yeah. No fucking way. Yeah. I can't imagine that nobody on his team was like, hey, you're basically his a meme. His kids had to tell him. And he's fine with it. He thinks it's funny. He I mean, who un- wouldn't? It's like. He doesn't understand it, but he gets why it's funny. <laughs> it's fucking free advertisement. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's always. It's free advertisement. Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit what you do. <laughs> Just talk about me. So, director Ben doesn't understand why 76-year-old Jack wants to live alone in the woods. Which, the fuck are you talking about? Because he's young and he's like, you know, I'm fresh. I'm 33 and I would love to just <laughs> He's be young and fresh out of college, Heather, and he hasn't been burned by the country and the world and all the people in it. Some of us are fine with not socializing. We've done quite well during the pandemic. Oh, yeah. This has been like my glory time. <laughs> Like, I love having not go anywhere. I'm like, don't worry, guys. I got this. <laughs> so you were just making us feel bad 20 minutes ago about laughing at videos of strangers online, but check out this dude who wants to be a hermit. <laughs> what a fucking weirdo, right? Uh, high ambitions. So Jack is very calm throughout this meeting and sees the whole thing as a joke. <laughs> Till a week later when he calls Ben and tells him the whole thing was just an act... He was pretending to be calm when in reality he hated the clips and wanted to sue everyone involved. He was just trying to project a different personality, <laughs> which is so weird because, like, who the fuck cares? Well, he thought if he acted calm on video now, it'll be easier to sue people for releasing those tapes of him being angry and making him look bad. It's, like it's not illegal to see people get angry. He didn't say anything racist. I don't. And also, like, what are you gonna sue over? You did you? it. Yeah. Like they, those words came out of your mouth. Now he doesn't care about that, so he just wants the world to know the real Jack. He was once a news broadcaster and editor, which makes sense because he's got the voice for it. Yes, it's very soothing. I'm not gonna lie, I like it. He eventually became disillusioned when it became less about facts and more about opinions. And eventually he became a salesman for Winnebago. Again, just a lot of yada yada. (laughs) Don't know how that happened. Yeah, it's a weird leap. But he does show Ben a copy of the finished sales video for Winnebago, which up until this time, I figured Jack was fired before it was even finished. (laughs) It was a lot. Did not know there was... There was a lot going on in that commercial, like extensive so we head to vegas to meet a guy of course named keith i fucking hate that name (laughs) who jack has known for 25 years who owns the biggest fucking headset i've ever seen (laughs) okay i'm glad that you (laughs) like a goddamn robot (laughs) how did that not kill his ear with the weight it reminds me of like the ear pieces from like the doctor who like when all the (laughs) That thing looks like you have about 15 minutes to talk before it overheats and burns the fuck out of you. And he also called Jack Boopski. Cyberman. He one time called Jack Boopski when he was talking to him. They had like a weird relationship. Like it yeah. seemed like... Not like... Sexual, but... That's why I was like, <laughs> At one time... They might have and realized. Yeah, it was kind of like friends. it. It wasn't like sexual. It seemed more of like that. Like um, it seems like exes who are still friends, like twenty years later. Yeah, that weird kind of dynamic. Like there's some like tension, but it's not like real tension. Like strong. It's, it's just yeah, it's old tension. It's like dusty so tension. Weird. So his take is Jack hates the inter- internet. And hates attention, so for him to be... Also, but can we just say internet? <laughs> God damn it. He hates the internet and hates attention, so for him to be famous on the internet... For something that doesn't cast him in the best light is the worst thing that could ever happen to him. Which, like, way to be dramatic. I can think of a million things that would be well, worse. basically like... Oh, God. What's his name? Ted Kaczynski. It's like the switch just went the other way. You're making me look bombs. bad. Because of the internet. Technology. But Keith, God, I hate that name, 
lets us know that Jack has a sweet side. At one point, Keith had nowhere to live, and Jack let him crash with him until he was able to get back on his feet again. Which again? And Jack wants to be on camera again. He is just worried he'll end up looking bad. Which... It's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say anything offensive, and you're pretty much good. Yeah. And even when you say offensive thing, you'll get a job at Fox News. It's not that big of a deal. Seriously. And then Jack goes missing while hiking? <laughs> There's just weird twists in this. Yeah, it was like kind of dramatic, too. It turns out he's There's been, a 911 call and everything. He's been in ill health and his vision is declining. And I guess he was quickly found. No idea, because yet again, they don't get into it. Yeah, much. they just like skip on over that. This movie is sitting at a 90% of Rotten Tomato, and I'm not sure why. This is man, it just me? They, like, skipped over the whole fact that this man's going blind. It's like, this is this amazing movie. And I'm like, there's just a lot that they could have gotten into that they just... It's like an over an hour long, and they didn't go in, like, didn't discuss the fact that he fucking went missing in the woods. <laughs> he could have died. So now he's got this weird rope maze so he could walk down the street. <laughs> Which I questioned, did he, like... Put that up himself? Yeah, I was like, who put this up? <laughs> How did he see it? Oh, my God. Ben comes back out to visit Jack, and Jack is acting like how we originally expected him to act. Just cantankerous. How I imagine myself in 15 years. He's a curmudgeon. He doesn't answer the door right away, so Ben kind of just pops in, asking for him. Which, like, what the fuck, bro? And you just hear Jack yell Except down the, the hall. Except the door seemed like it was cracked. Yeah, you hear Jack yell down the hall, I'm shitting. Just because I'm <laughs> shitting doesn't mean you can't come in, which I love. <laughs> it's like when my husband's like, oh, you're pooping? I'll wait till you're done to ask you something. You're like, why? I'm, I'm not doing anything right now. <laughs> like, We've been married for years. Just ask. Yeah, you can talk to me, but, like... Don't let come into the room with me and talk to me. Speak to crack the door. You don't have to come in. But yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like I've got nothing going on right now. I've got the time. There's no kids yelling at me. <laughs> this time. is prime talking opportunity. So Jack- also, like I like the fact that he said, "Are you really shitting in there?" <laughs> <laughs> no, look. he's just in the bathroom playing games on his phone. <laughs> Jack says he doesn't care that him going missing was in the news and became a big deal, which, okay, if you didn't care about the fame, why agree to these cameras on you yet again? Yeah, it was, like I said, very contradictory. Like, he wants to be a celebrity, but he's mad at his celebrity. It's weird. I don't understand him. So Ben's trying to tell him, let's get you a video camera and you can post your videos online so you can just get more of an audience for your beliefs. But Jack is like, nah, bro, these people won't be able to handle me. So they go film in front of a Walmart, which of course security, Which is so fucking hilarious. Security isn't cool with. They're not even like in front of the parking lot. They like were at a distance. Yeah. And then the guy comes over and then Keith starts swearing at this poor manager who's just doing his job. Uh, without explicitly saying it, calls them a Nazi and then they leave. They... He pretty much explicitly <laughs> said it. Like, let's be real. You don't have to say the word Nazi without you saying do that Nazi. Accents. Yeah. Like, if you use the word Gestapo, like, you're oh like. God. Well, as long as it's not Gaspacho. <laughs> I saw the best. Like, I want to say it was. A fucking idiot. Oh, God. It was like one of those comics. I'll have to send it to you. It was fucking hilarious. Um, so. They're heading to Best Buy when Jack says he doesn't want to do it anymore. He does that geriatric thing of being angry all the time for no reason. Like, you know how your parents will randomly be like, those illegals are taking our job. And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about, Dad? You've been at the same job for like 30 years. <laughs> or your grandma that just like randomly said shit. Yeah, it's like they're they're angry. But at least if they're angry, that means they're... Shit. Blood is still pumping and keeping them alive. Honestly, so that may be the reason they're alive. I think that's, yeah, that's why they just randomly just like just a little fire around. in their veins. Anyway, Jack doesn't make sense, so they stop at the sausage factory for lunch, which is in fact a cafe and not a strip club. Much <laughs> to my chagrin. Oh my god. I thought it was you the best how... name of a restaurant when he was like, and when we've got, we're going to have. And Ben was like, uh, what is this? <laughs> and he's like, oh, they got the best food. 
Um, you remember how we were talking about how like none of us have seen Twilight or read the books? Yes. So a comedian I like did an audio book for it on her Patreon. I was like, all right, I'll check this out. I am halfway through the first Twilight. That bitch has said chagrin like four or five times. <laughs> it is the slowest, dumbest book. Apparently vampires can't have sex, so I don't know why teenage girls are like flicking their beans to this. It's not exciting. Not to mention like... Nothing has happened. Him in the movie is not any better either. <laughs> like, like I just, just got to where they're playing baseball and I'm like, I know it's like the halfway point I think or a little over nothing has happened I don't what what were those bad fanfics of I can't remember now something was a bad fanfic of I thought Fifty Shades was a bad fanfic of Twilight is it maybe that's it there's nothing happening there I, I'm convinced that none of them ever, like, got any action growing up. I think she's a Mormon, which makes sense. Yeah, like, I I just feel like the people that write these, like, romance novels like this it's didn't so get out much. My favorite part is they're doing, like, blood testing in science class. She passes out, wakes up, he's holding her, and she's like, where were you? You weren't even in class today. And he's like, I was in my car listening to CDs. And he's like, that's fucking weird. Like, what? Like, none of... Oh, my... It's so, so fucking boring. If she wasn't so funny with her reaction. Oh, my God. She's... They can't have sex? Why am I even reading this? <laughs> was it like, uh... What's his face? Oh my god, why am I not... I'm like blanking on his name now. Um, the vampire guy. Oh, Robert Pattinson. Oh. Hey, he basically forgot he was even in the movie. <laughs> like, it's so bad. There's or was it Harry of, like, Potter that he forgot he was in? I think Harry Potter he forgot he was in. Yeah, that's what it was. It was Harry Potter. Well, and then he said he holds this wand. Like, like a, a gun? gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of like, he mumbled. She sighed. Uh, she, Very the brooding. The outfit she was wearing that he somehow fell in love with her. I think a blouse and one of those tan skirts that go down to like your ankles. Oh, God. Like, the tan khaki. I can see how the Mormon might like that. Like, but he just, you know, he never wanted to be with a human, but that did it for him. God. It's, so bad. it's like taking like any cheesiness in an interview with a vampire <laughs> and like amplifying it like by a thousand it's just like oh my god i'm like halfway done with this book there's still three more well i think that we need to like eat some gummies and watch the twilight movie i still want to do that with cats <laughs> cats is at least exciting <laughs> Chagrin, chagrin, chagrin. I was like, bitch, you gotta pick a new word. <laughs> She's trying to sound like an intellectual. Early halfway through the book, you've said it four times. I don't know that I say it, like, more than once every year. <sighs> okay. So, Ben wants a film about Jack's life, and Jack just wants to spout his beliefs, which just leads to more arguing, and this time a break of three months. And he's very political. I don't know what his beliefs are. He just hates government, I think. There's yeah. No left or didn't right. he, like, write some kind of... He wrote some kind of book on, like, religion. And he's just like, oh, what is happening he just, he here? He hates government. He's Keith, like a fever dream. Keith and Ben are going to take Jack to the Found Footage Festival in San Francisco. And Keith shows up to Jack's place with these giant wind chimes. They're bigger the than him! You know the sound guy fucking hated this. <laughs> Having to walk up that long ass driveway. It was so big. Wind chimes going, and they were just like clang, 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 clang. They get him. Do to you San like my wind chime? Clang, 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 clang. They get him to San Francisco, and he's bitching the entire time. Because <laughs> he still thinks of San Francisco as that place with all the hippies and yeah, shit, and, and yeah, and... exactly. Honestly, though, he's like my spirit animal because like. I'm this grumpy most days. I keep it all internal, though. Oh, I have a hard time. Like, I'm, 
you know, my husband would definitely say that, like, this is spot on me. <laughs> uh, Hillary Clinton. I'm a bitch. So he's bitching the entire time, and yet when they get him on stage for Q&A, he was having a pig and shit time. <laughs> it was like lights, camera, action. He's just like a whole fucking different person. Like he's joking around with the host and just really hyping the crowd up. Clearly loves the attention, but only when he can control the conversation. Mm-hmm. And finally, when the crowd cheers, he's talking shit about Dick Cheney. That's when he's like, okay, these people aren't idiots. Like, yeah, everybody hates Dick Cheney, dude. <laughs> it was so funny how he was just like, they're on my side. Okay, they're not so stupid after yeah. all. Uh, he comes off the stage and is finally realizing that he's not a joke to people. Like, no, we everybody's love it. He's been in that situation where nothing's going your way and you just. You're just pissy. Yeah. Like, we're not laughing at you directly. We laugh because we've all been in that situation. <laughs> he reacts the way we all wish we could. Just yeah. Openly. Just like verbal cussing, swearing diarrhea. Yeah. So that's what everybody has been trying to tell him all these years. And he's finally seeing it. He gets it. And, and that's the end. Oh, he takes, like, pictures with, like, the... Yeah, some of the fans. Yeah, yeah. and, like, that one girl is like, I watch, the, I watch this video whenever I'm having a bad day. And, like, he's just, like, eating that shit up. She's like, you were fucking bitching about these people. <laughs> yeah. That's the end of it. Uh, as far as I could find, Jack is still alive. And I think it'd be like in his 90s. That's surprising. Yeah. Uh, Especially that like. Anger. That anger keeps your blood going. Keeps I mean, honestly, alive. though, my grandma lived to be like in her early 90s. And like, she was fucking like a. She was Satan. Like, <laughs> and I say this kindly. Like. Same thing with my grandpa. The one who died two days before 9-11, and we were like, you fucking piece of shit. Of course she would do this. Dude, yeah, she called... to drive to go to your funeral. She called my kid a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, my grandpa would beat my grandma <laughs> for just no reason. Like, holy shit. Like, we had some fucked up family history. <laughs> so, in 2017, Ben released a short film titled Extraordinarily Unusual, Surprising the Winnebago Man. Where for Jack's 87th birthday, Ben and some of Jack's friends surprise him with a visit. It's cute. Do not surprise old people. (laughs) Especially a blind dude. (laughs) Why did I give him a heart attack? Yeah, whose idea was this? At least come up the hill with wind chimes or something. Just to mention, like, his 87th birthday. And he's blind. You're just gonna pop into his house. It's like a random birthday, so he's not expecting it. Yeah. Like... Like you said, the man is blind. Like, fucking heart attack central right there. It's cute. He's in a different house, still on a mountain alone. Oh my god, I don't I understand how he's allowed. Think his original house was lost in a fire. Oh, that's sad. But still up on a mountain by himself. What about Buddha? Oh, Buddha's gotta be long dead. Heather! She survived the fire, but... <sighs> I don't like that Buddha outlived this old man, or... Died before this old man. It was a big dog. They don't live that long. I was surprised at the breed for him. Like, he didn't strike me as, like, a... I just like this angry old man has a dog named Buddha. Yeah. And he's very loving. So, in conclusion, not an absolutely terrible film, but you can tell it's early in his career. Yeah, like I said. I don't think the 90% is warranted. It's like that ex-boyfriend just getting started. He's fresh out of college. He's, like, still eating, like, spaghetti where it's just literally, like, noodles and tomato sauce. Yeah. So many meals like that. A lot of ramen. He's, like, serving screwdrivers and... Oh, God. Is that why those are my favorite drinks? (laughs) And B&J's at his apartment where he has, like... One chair. It's a lawn chair. <laughs> you have like three or four chairs, but none of them match. He's got like two forks, three knives, a spoon, like four plates. <laughs> cups or whatever you got. Like, <laughs> yeah, like fast food cups. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what you're currently drinking out of. Hey man, the Dickie cups are classics. <laughs> 
You can't like you can't say no to a Dickies cup. <laughs> I think that's gonna be it for this week. We'll come back next and week. As I told you, I did There's see Stevie fantastic. on Tubi, so we have to do Stevie at some point. Stevie's oh no, I'm I'm 100 percent serious that we should do the Tender Swindler, which is hard to say. And the rural drawer. <laughs> the rural, yeah, rural drawer. <laughs> <laughs> and then we should do Stevie so that we have like uh like I wanna say funny one, but like I feel bad saying Stevie funny one. Is, it's sad, but he puts himself in the situation. Yeah, so then we can have like a <laughs> kinda sad funny one. So we'll be like funny, sad funny. Actually I guess they're both kinda sad with funny. A shirt on. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good trash. I laugh every time uh, Small Town Murder mentions the wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia. Like, anytime that I'm just... Stevie is up there, like, right alongside that. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I just, I laugh because I'm like, oh, that's funny. (laughs) So we'll have some good one next week. Yep. So, bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Talk To Me. The opening music is by Twisterium. For comments or suggestions, we can be reached by email at doctomepod at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter at doctomepod and find a link to our Facebook group in the show notes. Thank you.